Being truly fat adapted is an achievement. It's something that you should be proud of. It's a mark of hard work. It's a mark of doing things right, if you ask me. But there's a huge difference from being in ketosis and being fat adapted. And then there's an even bigger difference between being fat adapted and keto adapted. And in this industry, I'm getting a little bit annoyed with these terms being thrown around synonymously. They're very different, very different with very different applications and very different processes. And quite frankly, varying amounts of work that are put into something. So let's break it down. I do wanna make sure you hit that red subscribe button. Please hit that bell icon as well. And then after this video, I want you to check out Boo Foods, which is really a cool keto snack. There is nothing weird in these things. There's no sugar alcohols. It's straight up monk fruit, clean, clean keto bar. This is one of my son's favorite snacks and he's not keto. He just eats clean, right? So he loves these things, but they are delicious. They're macadamia flavor. They have a chocolate chip flavor. They have a cookie dough. Just their little bites are phenomenal. You can get them at Whole Foods. You can get them at Target. You can get them online. There's a link down below if you want to save a couple of bucks and get them shipped directly to you, or you can go to your retailer, but might as well save some money and use the link down below. So big thank you to Boo Foods for the support on this video and for giving my family some healthy pantry staples to have around. So ketosis is simply when you have ketones in your blood, period, right? Like I could have ketones in my blood right now and say, I am in ketosis, but does that mean I'm fat adapted? No, it means that I'm going through what's called ketonemia. Ketonemia means my liver has created ketones and I have ketones in the blood. The difference, fat adaptation, is where your body is primed and is used to utilizing fats as a fuel source. However, fat adaptation is not the same as keto adaptation. You can get fat adapted without doing keto. Keto is just a quick way to get there. Endurance athletes, for example, they work at a relatively low intensity for long periods of time where their body generally is using fats for fuel. Lower intensity activity, like low intensity rowing, running, cycling, that usually uses fats. It's just an aerobic process that combines fat with oxygen to create energy. Well, that would mean that an endurance athlete is pretty fat adapted because their cells are used to using fats, but they're not necessarily eating a ketogenic diet. I know lots of endurance athletes that eat hundreds of carbs per day, but they're definitely fat adapted. They're probably somewhat dual fueled. The benefit of getting fat adapted via a ketogenic diet is that you probably get there a little bit faster and you develop the ability to be highly optimized for that. But we'll talk about that in a second. I'm gonna to touch really quickly on what keto adaptation is, but then I'm gonna cover all these in a little bit more detail so you know what to look for and how to know. Keto adaptation is where you have been in keto for so long that your body is responding to the presence of the ketones in the blood differently. Because the ketones are not just a fuel, they act as a signaling device and they do all kinds of hormonal things and different enzymatic things and different DNA genetic things. And they can only do those things if you're actually keto adapted, meaning you've been in ketosis for a longer period of time. Fat adaptation is fuel utilization. Keto adaptation is the adaptation to utilizing ketones as signaling devices and higher levels of energy. Let's talk mitochondria for one second. Keeping it simple, the mitochondria is where our body processes energy. And in most of us that haven't done keto, it's processing glucose, okay? It's processing glucose, turning that, those carbohydrates into energy and voila. Okay, and then when we do certain kind of workouts or we do endurance work, the mitochondria utilizes fats. They have the ability to process both. However, they get optimized for one or the other. Now, what happens is the mitochondria has a half-life of about one to two weeks. And what that means is after one or two weeks, it sort of dies, if you wanna call it that, and then it recycles and gives birth to ultimately new mitochondria. Well, it takes about four or five half-lives cycles, generations, for the mitochondria to be reborn with something completely new, new machinery. So let's say, for example, I have the mitochondrial machinery to process carbohydrates. It's very good at processing carbohydrates. And then all of a sudden, I start consuming a bunch of fats and start doing keto. Well, at first, my mitochondria is going, what the heck's going on? I don't know how to do this. But after a week or two, it goes through a half-life. 
and it develops a little bit more ability. It gives birth. It's like having a new, having a kid and this kid develops some new attributes and he's able to process things a little bit different because it's a different generation. So this new mitochondria can process the fats a little bit more. Then another week or two goes by and gives birth to a new mitochondria. That mitochondria is a little bit better at using fats. And then another one is born. And that's even better until you get to four or five cycles of that then you have fully refreshed mitochondria. So largely you could say that it takes, well, five half-lifes or anywhere from five to nine weeks to really get used to utilizing ketones or fat, right? So that's kind of an inside look of how it works at a mitochondrial level. The thing we have to remember is that that can happen again if you're just doing lots of endurance work or if you're doing lots of fasting or if you're sitting in a sauna for a long time, all these things can trigger fat adaptation, okay? It can also happen with ketones because just because your cells are using fat and your mitochondria is using fat doesn't mean that it's efficient at using ketones. That's a different world altogether. So let's talk about fat adaptation as it continues. If you were to start keto right now, never doing keto before, you would find that your blood glucose levels would get pretty low. You would find that your body would kind of be in a little bit of shock. Your glucose would dip, you'd feel hypoglycemic. And this is normal because once again, your mitochondria is used to using carbs. All of a sudden, you cut out the carbs. It still has all the mitochondrial machinery to use carbs, so for all it knows, you're starving it. But what they found in the research is that after a couple of weeks, that starts to stabilize. You start to see the carbohydrates go back into the muscle, because normally what you do is you pull the carbohydrates from the muscle into the, into the bloodstream or into the liver and then into the bloodstream and you use it as fuel. But they found that the longer that someone is doing keto, the more that their muscles are holding glycogen again, indicating that because your body is now more efficient at using the fats, it doesn't have to use the carbohydrates that are stored in your muscles. Now, what's interesting is the research shows that after a year and a half plus, this is still continuing to evolve, which shows that even if you're doing a low carb or keto diet for a year and a half, you're still getting more and more and more fat adapted. The more fat adapted you get, the less you need to rely on carbs. And how you know you're getting fat adapted is, well, you can feel it. You can feel like fats give you energy more. You can feel it when you work out. You feel like you don't get winded as easy. You absolutely feel it. Now it's important that we talk about keto adaptation. Okay, so ketosis, ketones in the blood. I could put myself into ketosis in 24 hours by fasting, but it doesn't mean I'm fat adapted. Okay, fat adaptation, we covered. Keto adaptation is the next level. Keto adaptation is where your body has seen ketones in the blood for so long that it knows how to react to them because ketones are not just a fuel, they are a signaling device. Okay, now it gets complicated here, so we'll keep it simple on this video, but you can dive into more of my videos if you wanted to look into it. So ketones acting as a signaling device means that when the brain recognizes the ketones, they can actually bounce a signal off of them to trigger different metabolic things. Okay, for example, uh, one that's complicated is called histone deacetylase inhibition. Basically, it unlocks more of your genes for you. It unlocks some more of your genetic code so you can rebuild tissue, so you can have new stem cells. It does really miraculous things, but that is keto adaptation. And that is where the brain recognizes, oh, there's ketones here, there we go. One very important thing to note with all of this, hopefully you're still watching this video because if not, then you missed out and this is an important point. Ketone levels are not an indicator of how fat adapted you are. People might think my ketone levels are high, so I must be very fat adapted. If anything, it's kind of the opposite. For example, I've been keto for close to 10 or yeah, over 10 years now, little periods off and on, but largely keto for 10 years. My ketone levels didn't keep climbing. Like I don't have 10 millimoles of ketones in my blood right now. I have maybe 0.5. If anything, it's gone down. Because remember, your body's going to get more efficient at utilizing the ketones. So you don't have to produce as much. You get by with less. So that's a stronger indicator that you're fat adapted or keto adapted, right? Because my body knows how to use the fats. It knows how to use the ketones. It doesn't have to like pump the gas all of a sudden to create a bunch. Whereas in the beginning, that might be the case. So don't get thrown off by that. If anything, the unit of measure is going to be your ketones are gradually stabilizing, getting lower and staying consistent without these rampant, you know, rampant random spikes. So anyhow, that's the difference between keto, fat adaptation, and keto adaptation. See you tomorrow.